Hello people, I'm Jabby Kuei, joined by Char Kirk. Stop. And uh, we're looking at how the British took over India, according to Trevor Noah, from Afraid of the Dark on Netflix. This is from Trevor Noah's YouTube channel. I've been watching him for years, ever since his uh, first specials came on Netflix. We shall check this out. Here we go. When you think about colonization, it is the strangest thing you can think about. Because conquering is one thing. You go to another country, you take what's theirs. You want more. You take the land, you know, you, you take the resources, you, you kill the people. That I understand. But colonization, I don't condone, I understand. <laughs> but colonization is strange because you go there and you don't just take over, you then force the people to become you. That is such a strange concept. When you think about where the British did it, I mean, they, you know, they did it in, in, in Africa, they, you know, they did it in, in, in Asia, and think about it in India. Those cultures could not be more diametrically opposed. And out of nowhere, the British just decided to roll up Imagine what the Indians must have felt like on that day. Minding your own business, walking through a field. Next thing you know, the British showed up on horseback. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. By order of Her Majesty the Queen, we have arrived. <laughs> What is the name of this land? This land over here? This is called India. Well, my good man, I am here to tell you that India is now under the British Empire. Hey. And I am glad that I can tell you that India is exactly where it was yesterday. <laughs> No, 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 I, I feel you're not understanding what I'm saying. I'm letting you know that we're here to colonize you by order of the Queen. Who is the Queen? <laughs> the Queen. The Queen of England, the ruler of Great Britain. She who was ordained by God. Which God? <laughs> God. The one true God. There are many gods, my friend. What is the name of your God? There is only one God, and his name is God, and you two shall worship him. You want me to worship a God, but you don't want to tell me his name? What are you talking about? There are many gods, okay? There is Shiva, there is Lakshmi, there is Hare Krishna, there are many gods. What is the name of your God? His name is God. You don't know the name of your God? It's just God. Is it like mommy or daddy? <laughs> you want me to worship your God, but you don't want me to tell me his name, huh? How am I going to pray to him? What do I do? Every morning I go to wake up, then I pray like, oh dear God, dear God, I was hoping that maybe God, you could have me. No, no, sorry, not you, other God. No, no, other God. No, no, not wrong God. No God, I was trying to talk to other. No, 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 you're right. I should have asked for your first name. No, no, God, no, other God, please. No, God behind that God. No, not you today, God. Other God, you're right. He told me he would know I was talking to, and I don't, no, no, other God, please. That God on the other, no, no, that God, you, then I wonder why my prayers are not getting answered, huh? How dare you speak to me like that? Do you know who I am? No, because you never introduced yourself. I have come here representing Great Britain. And I have never heard of Great Britain. Who gave you that name? Well, 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 we did. You called yourselves great? Isn't that a little presumptuous? <laughs> Shouldn't you wait for other people to tell you how great you are? Huh? Shouldn't you just go around the world and just do good things, good things, good things? Then people go, oh my God, Britain, look how great you are. <laughs> like, I, I beg to differ, I believe we could do it because we knew instinctively, we are Great Britain. Well, in that case, welcome to Great India. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. How dare you speak to me like this? Look, you're the one who dares to speak to me, okay? I was here minding my own business in my land. You came over here riding on your skinny cow, telling me that things are going to change. 
I don't know who you are. All I know is you are feeling crazy. Okay, you are not feeling too right. And I didn't want to say anything, but you look like you are going to faint. In fact, it looks like you have died last week. Okay? <laughs> Something is very wrong with your skin. You are not looking good, my friend. Maybe you should come down. We have a curry. We talk about this. What are you talking about? I look quite normal. You do not look normal, my friend. I have never seen anybody with that complexion in my life. Okay. You look like you're playing hide and seek with the sun your entire life. I don't know what is happening, but that is not how a person should look, huh? I can see your veins pumping through your skin right now. Do you know how creepy that is? Pumping, 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 pumping. If I was your doctor, I don't need X-ray machine. I just go, what is problem? It is your kidney. How do I know? Because you're translucent. That is how I know. <laughs> tell you, we are going to run this country whether you like it or not. We are not going to do anything you tell us. You're a madman. We are going to take it. You're not taking. We're going. <laughs> She's all yours. Take, take. <laughs> Don't play nice. Take. Who came up with the name India? I'm not sure, actually, because I thought it was Hindustan before. That's what I thought. And maybe he did that just name. for the sake of simplicity with, with the uh, audience. The joke, yeah, because yeah. otherwise people, I don't think people would have understood. I was a little bit apprehensive at first, to be honest, just, just to see whether he was going to do the Indian accent. He does all kinds yeah, of accents. Yeah, but it's I, like, I, that's, that's fine. That, yeah, but, I mean, his Indian accent wasn't fantastic. Slightly questionable. But it sounded more like a Mexican accent to me than an Indian accent. I think he got most of it down. It was just some of the um, the ah. He sounded more like South African doing an Indian accent. I think his Brit. I think his British accent, his English accent, is pretty good. Yeah, his English accent is good because it's not that far off from his normal accent. Yeah. But I was just wondering, in terms of his Indian accent, if it was more kind of inspired by Indians in South Africa, because I know that they. There's a, there's a large Indian population in South Africa, but I don't know what an Indian South African accent sounds like. I really appreciate it. My favorite moment in his whole bit was when he goes, who called you? <laughs> who called you Great Britain? He's like, well, we came up with it ourselves. Yeah. We just knew instinctively. You know, it's just very presumptuous. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, totally. He called it out. The God joke was kind of funny. He, he just really like, you know, went all in with that God joke. He just took it all the way. Well, know? that's Trevor Noah's style. Yeah. Trevor Noah has a tendency to linger on things until he feels like he's like enjoyed as much of that joke as possible. I've watched him live once and he's actually better live than he is. Um, I mean, he's still good. In my opinion, he's still good even on television or YouTube or Netflix, whatever the case is. Watching him live was one of my favorite stand-up comedy experiences. I was in stitches the entire time. He's really, really good live. And I wasn't drunk, <laughs> so <laughs> that's the important part. The point I'm trying to come to is that a lot of comedians will rush through material. If you look at uh, Kevin Hart's last stand-up special, or maybe not the last one, but the one before it, he's just blitzing through his material. Right. He's moving as fast as possible. And part of the reason why is because he's doing these tours and he's like, he's probably tired of the material. He's always working. It's not just him. I noticed this with a lot of comedians where they just like, they kind of shove through their material as quickly as possible. But Trevor Noah takes his time. Especially when you're watching a YouTube video, you're not necessarily ready for that, for it to just take its time and, right. and be chill, like a live stream. <laughs> I appreciated the points he was making. I mean, I get a little bit wigged out about the Indian accent as well, because there's a lot, I mean, having gone to India, I noticed, and like you pointed out rightly, there's a lot of different Indian accents, Yeah. you know, depending on what region you're from. Most of the, I, I believe that most of the Indian accents that Americans are exposed to are from su Southern Indians who migrate here to the States. I could be wrong. The The other thing is that he, he, he introduced you, and I don't know, I don't know when it became such a fascination, if it was like pre-colonization or post-colonization. There are plenty of Indians who are light-skinned. It's interesting kind of looking at that content now with the lens of more knowledge about India and Indian culture, because I can see how maybe uh, an English person or an American person or any Western person, you see this stand up and like all of the stereotypes, like the gods, the cow, Yo, the, I mean, they've the had, they've got horses. They've got yeah, horses they have, in India. Yeah. I mean, I giggled a little because it was a funny joke that did come to my mind. I was like, no, I'm pretty sure Indians know what a horse looks like. And same with the fair skin because, you know, India is such a diverse country that, you know, it runs the gamut from fair skin to really dark skin. And you, you practically have every single shade under the sun in this one country. Yeah, I mean, it's a stand up bit. Yeah, exactly. You know, and at the end of the day, it's like, it's his jokes and he is playing in stereotypes. 
a little bit there. That's obvious. But at the end of the day, he's making jokes and he's also making good points. Yes. I'm trying not to read too deep into it. Like we have a lot of information that um, makes us more privy than your average Westerner. We know some of the fallacies in what he's saying. That's, we acknowledge that. And moreover, I'm also acknowledging that he's a stand-up comic, he's making jokes, and he's also making good points. Yeah, and the point being is that England just came along to another country, and uh, after some negotiation or some chit chat, they were like, ah, we have guns, boom. And it's like, yeah, well. I mean, that's, that's basically what it's been. There you go. You know, for hundreds of years. Yeah. It's just been that. We have more firepower. Very aggressive. You will give us your land. Well, now we own it. It's like, no, piss off. The most upsetting thing I think I've ever seen related to Britain being aggressive was the first night of your wife thing from Braveheart. Oh. I don't even know if that's true, but I just remember that from Braveheart and I was just like, Oh. That's horrifying. Yeah. I, I mean, that that was more of much older times, and and not every lord did that. You it know? still just speaks to the attitude, like the overall attitude. Like I'm gonna take what I want. All right. Well, cool. This was fun. Uh, you guys hopefully enjoyed that, and uh, let us know your feelings in the comments below, and uh, be kind to one another. I'm Jabby Kuwait. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.